everybody, this is Ernie Hatmaker, and today I'm going to be um, planting my corn. I'm going to try to um, cover up the rows um, that have been tilled. Now, my original plan was to, and I'm probably still going to, get some cardboard and do a different bed, just straight over grass and flowers and stuff like that. But I've got this uh, bed where I planted um, some gray squash, and the squash isn't doing too well, so when we did the soil test, um, there's still just a ton of nitrogen and a few other chemicals that were um, in trace amounts, but apparently the squash don't like that. So, um, because this was a soybean field, you know, and who knows what the soybeans, you know, were treated with, with some of the things that, that they were treated with. I mean, it was close to organic, but there was still, you know, some things that are, are um, mixed in with some of the uh, treatments for them that are required um, by the insurance companies um, when you insure your crop. So there are certain things that you have to do, certain things you have to add at certain times, and that stuff is still in the soil even two years later. I'm hoping that next year I'm able to plant in that area more than just, you know, um, corn or tomatoes. So, let's get started. It is going to be a hot one today. I think it's going to be like 93. I'm wearing long sleeves mainly because when the sun um, first comes out, uh, so it should be about in two hours, it's going to be blazing. Um, so I'm hoping that I don't get sunburned too bad. So this is the Guatemalan corn that uh, McGee Homestead Adventures sent me. This is only 25 of them. Um, some of them didn't come up. They might be upside down. Um, I tried to plant them the way they would grow out, but, you know, sometimes plants don't want to listen. So I'll check and see if, um, look at that. The one from this one, the roots are going, growing straight through the other one. They're ready to be planted. So I came over here to, you know, kind of check out the area I'm going to be covering over, and look what it popped out of the ground. One of the squash actually popped out. So I don't know if the others are going to try to or not. I don't know how many seeds are still in here, how many are viable, how many aren't, how many are going to be able to pop out. My rule of thumb is if they come out of seed, they do okay, but when I transplant them into this from a different medium, they don't do that well. So last year I had um, a total of 13 squash, and uh, they were zucchini and um, the yellow uh, straight neck and crook neck mix. So this year I was trying to plant more squash and do it out here, but the only way I think I'm going to be able to do it out here is if I trench it and put my own soil in. So anyway, like I said, I think I'm going to stick with the original because I see no more that are popping out. I don't see anything else popping out. So um, the squash and the corn are going to coexist. What little squash is already out here, I'm going to leave it. Um, thankfully, I only planted seven per row, so I didn't lose as, as many seeds as, thankfully, I, I could have lost. Yeah, I see no more popping up. They might all surprise me and try to pop through the, the paper after I lay it. It's just like these flowers over here. Last year when I planted wildflowers, they didn't come up till this year. <laughs> so, I've got flowers in here. Some of them are wild, but most are perennial. And I'm seeing none of them. Um, I see bindweed coming out, and it shouldn't even be here. Alright, this day isn't getting any cooler. 
I need to get started. I don't know if you saw, but I broke a leaf on that one right there as I was pulling it up. You win some, you lose some. So I didn't realize that all I had was, you know, I mean, I didn't realize these were 30 foot rows. I just, you know, did the size bed I wanted to do. So I actually need to go and get some more um, 30 foot um packing paper which is what this is it's it's still brown paper um it's not as thick as cardboard it's pliable because it's used you know to wrap packages and things like that there's no plastic in it which i really like um the downside of course is you know it's five bucks a roll where i'm getting it from but i need to get three more if i'm going to do this correctly so I was spreading this mulch with my hand, just kind of moving it around, and this lady jumped out. And I don't know if you can see that, but she's actually as big as my thumb, like my whole thumb, her body. This camera just doesn't do her justice. I think I'll be using the shovel and the hoe from now on. That's a big spider. So as you can see from here, it has uh, gotten the wheelbarrow to make short work of covering this paper and the corn and the squash. So you can see that um, the mulch is in there. There's a few ants that have decided they'd come over. There's going to be diatomaceous earth thrown out here. Uh, Otherwise, the ants are going to bring aphids. They're good for doing stuff like that. So there's a few gray squashes thrown out here. And the corn is spaced in such a way that um, we can still get to the squash. And if there are some kind of, you know, corn bugs or whatever that, you know, now I know stink bugs like to, to get on the corn. So hopefully it's spaced wide enough apart that I can get to it. So out of 25 that we tried to transplant, um, eight of them had molded over with, you know, with peat. That's kind of what you get. But uh, we haven't gone to get any more of the packing paper, but I really like that a whole lot better than the, the rolls of paper, um, the really thin rolls. They'll disintegrate faster, the thin rolls will, but they're harder to work with. You know, the wind blows them up easier. Anyway, I'm really happy with, um, not happy with this, this guy right there. Look at that slug. Dude, where do you think you're going? <laughs> 